Hello everybody, today we are going to discuss The True Beauty by Thomas Carew. Uh, as you can see, um, he was born in 1595 and died in 1640. He was one of the major, uh, we can say, uh, cavalier poets. Now, cavalier poets means the poets who supported Charles I uh, in the uh, say 17th century uh, actually those people who supported Charles I and especially during the English Civil War they were called Cavalier and he was one among those Cavalier poets and he uh, if we talk of his style and his poetry so um, most of his poems are love poems and especially addressed to an imaginary lady named, C uh, named uh, Celia and <clears throat> he, he followed Petrarchan tradition in his poems. Uh, the, the kind of uh, poetry written in those times or the kind of poetry that Petrarch wrote, he followed that tradition in his poems. Uh, his poems are full of conceits. Uh, conceits means uh, we can say the comparisons so there are different sorts of uh, long comparisons especially uh, fanciful comparisons that is what actually conceit is so uh, such conceits are uh, there in his poems uh, they are quite amusing uh, the, the things uh, we can say uh, in his poems are presented in a very lucid manner means Though he uh, even imitated and copied uh, the earlier poets, especially Ben Jonson and John Dunn, these two poets influenced him a lot and he was kind of a fan or follower of these two poets. So he imitated uh, their style, their poems. But the quality about uh, Thomas Carew was he actually presented them in a new touch like he uh, he would make them uh, make those things or those expressions as if they were of his own so that was his quality uh, in a new form altogether he would present them uh, he was quite a witty kind of poet or even the cliches were presented in a very uh, witty and cogent and convincing manner in his poems so and major uh, most of his poems we can say are means uh, he is famous for his lyrical poems and also for his uh, amatory poems that he wrote so that was the but uh, though he wrote such poems still this one uh, is about the true beauty and uh, always there was a kind of uh, convincing element in his poem that can always be found though there are uh, different uh, poetic uh, techniques like simile metaphor and such but they were never used to create any confusion or uh, any complexity in his poems the diction also was quite uh, a simple diction that was used by Karu in his poem. So these are the qualities of Thomas Karu as a poet and he uh, enjoyed a good life uh, after actually his father uh, requested uh, the husband of one of his niece and then he was appointed as a personal assistant, a PA to Mr. Carlton, the, the husband of uh, her his father's knees actually and then their financial conditions improved but later on he had a dispute with him he was sent back to England and then he later in the later part he started his career as a poet and he wrote poetry and such so that's all about Thomas Carew as a poet and now let's come to the poem which is in two stanzas and are very simple and uh, very uh, say written in a very cogent manner so let's see how it is he that loves a rosy cheek or a coral lip admires that means 
a person who loves a rosy cheek now here rosy cheek coral lips they are uh, metaphorical expressions and metaphor means an implicit comparison between two different things when two different things are compared and if the comparison is a direct one so such a comparison is called metaphor so here cheeks have been compared with rose and lips have been compared with coral so he is saying one he that loves a rosy cheek and or a coral lip admires means one who is after physical beauty rosy cheek coral coral actually it's a it's a stone a gem and it's of red color so lips red lips so that's what he is trying to say so overall it's all about physical attributes physical characteristics so one who is after the physical beauty who is uh, like uh, uh, after uh, say rosy cheeks or coral lips or such kind of um, physical qualities and characteristics physical virtues only or from star like eyes dot seek fuel to maintain his fires so star like eyes is an example of simile eyes have been compared with star and that too using like so when we compare two unlike things using like or as that is called simile this is saying that one who what um, by these physical attributes wh whose flames that is whose uh, passions whose strong emotions whose strong feelings are what ignited who feels it all kindled by these physical attributes the corporal uh, qualities or virtues so if one is after all these things then it's of no use because physical beauty it decays it de degenerates it passes with time it is only temporary it is transient it's not lasting so that's why he says now here fuel and fire these are all metaphorical expressions that fuel uh, you Uh, these uh, physical beauty when they attract you and they they act or they function like fuel and uh, these fire fire is about passion strong emotion strong feelings the gush or the spurt of emotion that runs through your body when you see that um, physical beauty so it's all that he is talking here in this poem so but a smooth sorry so he says as old time makes these decay so his flames must waste away so time he is personifying time here time is written in capital and he is saying old time so it means time has been personified so he says as old time makes these decay means with the passage of time these physical qualities that one is after uh, the rosy say cheeks or coral lips so one who is after these physical qualities and when these physical qualities decay degenerate deteriorate with the passage of time this happens because physical beauty vanishes with the passage of time as the time passes it takes away all these physical attributes with it so and that's the rule of or that's the law of nature that's the rule of nature so uh, the physical beauty is never trans uh, never permanent it is all ephemeral and transient and transitory short living so if your love is based on these passing qualities these transitory qualities then how can that love be a uh, lasting love so he's saying so his flames must waste away so with the passage of time the flames of love the flames of emotion the flames of uh, feeling that too waste away that too pass away 
means the love dies with the time with the passing away or uh, with the passage of time the love also dies because the the object after which it was that too dies that too goes away and so the love also passes with that and now in the second stanza what he says but a smooth and steadfast mind gentle thoughts and calm desires hearts with equal love combined kindle never dying fires so what he means is that smooth and steadfast love or say mind so if one is quite steady composed cool if one has if one has a cool mind one has a composed uh, temperament one has we can say one is unperturbed by things and um, say unperturbed by these physical uh, qualities or corporal qualities one who is gentle in his thoughts quite uh, we can say uh, having good thoughts having good ideas one who is virtuous one who is virtuous about um, these th means one who is not just a, a, a lascivious person or lustful or just not about the physical qualities one is quite gentle in his thoughts uh, quite a, a good person uh, uh, following uh, or who is after the qualities of head and heart cool desires not the passion just uh, a momentary passion aroused by the physical quality or physical beauty so if it is not the case if it is not the case and if the hearts are full of love if the lovers have the feelings in their hearts the hearts are full of equal love it's not just about that they saw uh, each other and they just loved and then um, as the time passed that the love also passed away if it is not that if their hearts are filled with love for each other if emotions are from deep within uh, in the heart and in the mind not just superficial not just tangential or just temporary if uh, emotions are not that then what the love will be ceaseless then the love will be lasting then the emotions created by it will be never dying then the feeling generated or ignited by it will be non stopping so such a love it would generate where these are not i despise lovely cheeks or lips or eyes and poet says and where these things are not there it means the qualities of head and heart are not there where these uh, permanent qualities the lasting qualities are not there uh, on which a true love should be based like that one should have gentle thoughts uh, should be gentle manly uh, so uh, should have such noble uh, characteristics so if the love is not based on those noble qualities and uh, not based on the gentle qualities instead of these if the love is based on say the physical ones the transitory qualities then um, it's all futile and useless and so in such case i hate i despise i detest i abhor these rosy cheeks or coral lips or eyes then what use they are of if actually it cannot uh, when they they cannot create the feeling within in one's heart if um, it is not about uh, the qualities of head and heart if one gets like uh, just perturbed by just the physical beauty which passes with time 
So if you love a search, then what's the use of um, uh, say all these physical uh, attributes if you don't have the gentle thoughts, if you don't have the cool desires, if the passions are not in your control. If it is not, then these physical attributes are of no use. So that is the whole poem about that what is true beauty and what a true love should be based on. So uh, very beautiful and a short lyric by Thomas Karu and I hope you might have understood this very well and the, um, if we talk of the uh, say the form of the poem so as I said it's a short lyric written in uh, two stanzas uh, the, the Petrarchan tradition he has tried to follow uh, in lyrics and a beautiful rhyme and rhythm has been maintained in this poem and apart from that uh, beautiful uh, poetic devices, metaphor, simile, personification have been used. The diction is very, uh, say, suitable to the idea of the poem, very simple and there is lucidity and clarity in this poem. So these are the qualities or uh, characteristics that we find in this poem. And I hope it is very much clear to you. Uh, even uh, I should say the usual things have been presented in a very witty and very acceptable manner here and uh, that is the quality of Thomas Karu that always amusing, always he writes in an amusing manner. So here too he has uh, done so. So I hope it's all very much clear to you and I'll come with more such poems for you. So till then keep watching. Thank you very much.